All right. Hi, Harish. How are you doing? Hey, good man. How's it going? Good. Nice to catch up with you after really long. Akshay, I met Harish, one of the first folks at Cred that I met, right? And I'm in a restaurant with Kunal. This is much before Cred had launched. And Kunal's like, hey, I'm working on this new startup. And he opens this app, okay? And it just opens beautifully. And then I put my number in. And then two minutes later, this beautiful thing happens. And then it tells me my credit score. And I'm fucking shocked. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? What, what is my credit score? This looks so good because, you know, at that time still like, you know, apps weren't as slick as, I mean, this is my Desi inside me talking. This feels like an international quality. Sounds like how, you know, who's, who's made this. And that's when Kunal spoke about Harish. And now when we talk about, for example, when you talk about marketing, right? Okay. Top brand marketing, you know, earlier people used to say Zomato. The second you talk to anyone about design and you want to give an, you know, the go-to example, you know, as a feel feel energy, but I go cred just say feel energy, you know, that's, it's, it's, a, it's a line that I often hear Harish. First of all, how does that feel to be, you know, someone who's lauded for, you know, the gold standard of design? I mean, I mean, it's a good feeling, man. It's uh, like, you know, building, uh, building apps that really stand out for good design. They, it's apps that really stand out for like, you know, the design ethos is something that I have always wanted to do. And, and like, you know, cred, ended up being the company where I could like really push that because we had a lot, lot of things falling in place together. It had Kunal had the right vision. We have a good team. And then I guess also about timing, like you know, we got something really working and, and I'm glad uh, it has resonated well uh, with me. This is your second stint with Kunal, right? Yep. You, you, you guys also worked at Free Charge. I wanted to ask you, uh, how is Kunal different from Free Charge? Like, you know, Kunal 1.0 and 2.0. You worked with him now over a decade, right? Like it's it's been a long time. Oh, Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I I kept in touch with Kunal even after I departed from Free Charge. I left somewhere around 2015, 2016, I guess, uh, to, to go work for Google. But I think I and Kunal never really went out of touch. We've been always speaking about stuff like, you know, Kunal was doing his gig at Sequoia before that he was doing his Y Combinator stuff. He was doing a whole bunch of travel. At no instance did I think he would start up again because he was doing his thing and I thought he was having a good time traveling across the world and speaking to people. But then I, I remember, I think it was um, November, October, November 2017. Uh, when I met him again, I hadn't met him in a in a long time. So we caught up at Leela. That's his favorite place in Bangalore uh, to call people. So I just thought that he was up to something. He didn't have an idea, Tanmay, to be very honest. He was only saying like, you know, there's only very few people in this country that can be monetized. Mm-hmm. And I want to build something for them. Like, you know, uh, his standard line was like, stop everything that you're doing, chalo, start up karna hai. That's what he said. And I think he said uh, two to three things that I, I, I wanted to hear at that point in time. And, and, and I was sold. To be very honest, I was getting a little saturated and tired building at scale. I was getting tired building stuff that works for everyone. Uh, honestly, I was uh, not at a mind space where I wanted to do that anymore. But most of the work that I had <laughs> was largely about building for scale. I wanted to build for fewer people and something where if everybody did not get it, it was okay. And funnily, it became the <laughs> mind that not everyone gets it. But anyway, I think that was the first thing that he sold to me that like I could actually build a slightly mm. more crafty stuff, which uh, where the considerations were not necessarily mm. that it doesn't work for a million people. So yeah, I was like, I don't want 200, 300 million people get a design. I want top 25 million credit card holders only. Like that's who I want to cater to. And not only that, man, sometimes like, you know, your design choices and the way you build uh, when your uh, target addressable market is smaller is very different from when you're actually building uh, for a broad spectrum of people. Uh, Kunal is a very... uh, a very fungible, very rapidly learning human. That's what I've understood about him. Uh, he's always uh, looking at signals and understanding how the world is moving. He's a very observant person. That's what I like about him. So Free Charge, I think he was building a mass market product with some differentiation. It was like a cool hip brand that he wanted to create out of a very commoditized sector, if you may, like, you know, like prepaid mm. 10 rupees is, a, mm. is as commoditized as uh, a business could be. I think through the years, he has probably also uh, like, you know, his VC stint and also doing cred for this long. I think uh, he has become somebody who understands consumer experience a lot more than what he actually did back in the day. Not that he understood it lesser than, but I think he has also grown himself as an entrepreneur that understands the consumer psyche really well. When you're designing, does does his consumer insights help? And if they do, can you pinpoint an example of at any point that it's helped? Yes, man. I think working with Kunal, the best part is uh, the, something that uh, sets him apart from the other other entrepreneurs that I have spent time with, both working directly or indirectly, is that uh, Kunal is a very instinct-driven person. 
Mm. I think uh, Kunal uh, and I have that similarity if I uh, say that because both of us sort of design and build on instinct and measure and correct on data. Like, you know, I, I work really well with people like that. I mean, if you ask me to build on data, it gets pretty painful because it's a very uncreative thing. To do. Everything is sort of driven by a certain heuristic. Uh, you you give a model to a software program and it'll tell you what to build, then you don't really need me. I, I, uh, I like the fact that I can apply some bit of artistry, some bit of craft and some bit of instinct and intuition in building something. Kunal is also that person. Like, you know, I mean, most of his decisions are uh, sometimes about how he feels about things and uh, he is more right than wrong uh, which is what has led to him being able to create what he has created so I think that's exciting uh, I think he has a good sense of uh, applying art I think that's more helpful at times than being an artist that's that's a good point having a good sense of where to apply artistry is a rare trait so it's good that he has that and, and at least I enjoy doing that with him so it sounds like you, you know one of the big reasons that you joined Cred was you a newfound sense of zero to one freedom, you know, or oh, we're going to start from scratch. And that's, that's always exciting. So freedom was a, was a big priority for you at that point, right? Like the excitement of freedom to be able to build something from scratch in the, in the brief time that I've gotten to meet you and some of the folks, uh, that's a sense I get that there's, there is a certain something about design culture at cred. Can you tell me what is it and how is it different from other startups? See, I myself have done design uh, uh, and, and my own way of doing design is different depending upon the job that I have taken. Uh, so what, what I apply at Cred is different from what I would have probably applied at Google or maybe even what I applied at Free Charts. At, at Cred, I think there are two to three things that we said before we started. Of course, zero to one is always mm-hmm. great when you're actually building something ground up. It's always fun. Uh, we had a very clear notion of what this uh, product would be. So this is, uh, how do I say it? So we wanted something that would be known for how it looks. It's a very counterintuitive way of actually thinking about products. You guys thought this, that I want people to go like this looks. I think I remember saying this. I told Kunal, this shit has to look good. Mm. And he said, absolutely. And I think I'm, I'm surprised. That's the first thing that I said. We didn't say this has to work really well. We didn't say this has to uh, like you know, touch uh, 100,000 people. We have to become like a billion dollar company. We didn't say any of that. I think when I first was speaking about brainstorming, about building this app, I, I think I said this line that this has to look really, really good. Uh, and he said, yes. And then we spoke a, a whole bunch about bespoke things that we both have uh, encountered and experienced through our lives, like you know, all sorts of white glove stuff that we have experienced. We laughed about the sum of point pointlessness of some of them uh, and and uh, and we ended up saying it is that pointlessness that makes some of these premium goods premium i want to talk about that it, it's it's some of that shit that makes these premium goods premium yeah it's a very fuck you attitude to you know people who want to peg it to be something like what is it that makes something that doesn't give a shit so cool one is that irreverence like you pointed out it's a it's a point that i always wanted to make i don't think it was planned to be polarizing i don't think cred's app or the design language was like from the word go intended to be polarizing do you think it's polarizing it is polarizing as if you actually look at how the design community looks at cred and i i'll uh, be honest here uh, uh, there are clearly two sets of people a bunch of people who think actually i have this cool and a whole bunch of people that actually think we are all on the wrong stuff wait so what is the design uh, design critique of de- cred's design <laughs> a lot of them my favorite is uh, a lot of ui but no ux it makes no sense but that's my favorite i mean I, that line is almost like breathing but not alive the the thing i found common talking to a bunch of folks at trupti and you you guys like to i guess short elitism right there is a you know there's an elitism mm-hmm. that comes with des- in, within the design community saying oh this is this this is what the conventional wisdom says and no 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 harish harish is elitist in his own ways yeah, yeah, that I am. Sure, sure, of course, <laughs> of course, of course. I mean, of Look course. Harish smile right now. Like, he was like, I'm also sometimes like that. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, Harish, you were talking about cred designer. It really piqued my interest because as an outsider, I don't understand what is good design, bad design. I can feel good design, right? But I can't articulate why it's good. And like, one of the things that fascinated me, you put stories inside this. Like, there's a story feature in a, in a financial app. Like, what happened there? People use certain features and patterns across multiple applications like you know so mm-hmm. if, you, if you actually looked at a product like instagram and then you compare that with credit it's natural that you have more time that is being spent on instagram because naturally it's there's only so many credit cards i can pay bills for <laughs> yeah so how much ever i i'm I, how much ever I, I i push features or do stuff it's not going to be like a, an analog product on instagram but the, the good part about certain patterns that these uh, uh high 
session apps creators that they get internalized by people like you know right. you don't have to necessarily teach people uh, what is story yeah yeah it is just a list of things back in the day in the 90s when we were building websites we used to call that a carousel a uh, story is nothing but a glorified carousel which actually has a ring around a circle that's about it it's beautiful it's so beautifully explained harish like this is pattern matching right harish is like oh your eyes go to the top right anyway you're used to clicking on a circle you're going to click on it a very very simplified breakdown of consumer behavior that reminds me of an example that someone told me saying what is arnab goswami doing if not doing a reaction video at scale every night like he's reacting to the news with four or five panelists that's true that's true i see this very commonly in people who, you know who are so good at pattern matching what in the cred app do you think is you know unconventional or something that you know you maybe you've heard critique of and maybe you can tell me why you made that choice still uh, see credit when it started it was the, the main feature was to uh, be able to pay your credit card bills and 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 the second uh, most differentiated feature if you think was that we were the first ones to get your outstanding in a reliable fashion because we had like statement access through email and we could actually parse that and get you some really meaningful uh, data out of it uh, there are two ways of looking at payments one can you can have a very utilitarian view to payments right like you, know, you show three cards and put them all together and and say pay now pay now pay now you just have like one screen but instead we just went and created this elaborate screen where your card is sort of redesigned if you actually see the card screen at cred your your credit cards are actually painstakingly recreated ah okay yeah it it was counterintuitive to conventional ux wisdom because like typically people say uh, show everything together show it on the first fold keep them all together so that you can click and go things like credit cards you you hold them very close to yourself right like you, know, you keep them in your wallet you always check how they are kept and there is a certain physical metaphor with respect to how your wallet works and and, and honestly cred was not the first one if you see the app wallet that launched several several years ago sort of built itself on that metaphor so we just uh, thought like you know people feel firmly attached to a screen that actually is a representation of what they actually have mm-hmm. in, uh, and and that screen gets a lot of love even today you know people like to go to that screen even if you even if they're not paying their bill many a time people just come over this that screen and just check that they feel good about the fact that they're all firmly there and i have a certain uh, certain sort of comfort that sort of comes mm-hmm. from from looking at that so mm-hmm. that was that was a choice that we made and that's something that we would never change on this product like you know even if we have like 100 other features that we have uh the card listing will always have cards that look like cards and i and kunal say this very often in the ui the cards should look like cards it should feel firm it should feel like that is the card i hold and that's what i'm paying for so mm-hmm. um most of the payment apps if you actually see it's not a it it's it's not a bad idea to show it uh like a simple list you can actually do that and it'll probably have uh, a, its mm. own set of benefits by doing that but i think this is something which we took a very conscious call on and it really works well for us and it's interesting because this page it's actually a lot of real estate yep right it's a, it's a dedicated button just for literally this is a list of your cards yep. right yep. with with two buttons next to it that says manage and pay now both of which look really solid and there's a haptic feedback when you then you touch it right it's like it's like you're touching your own wallet i know there's no feeling you can attach to the design but the feel like it is leathery yeah, you're right then man and the whole idea to move to that style of design that that's called neomorphism was also that it mocks physical objects that you touch and hold and feel every day but neomorphism is that what it's called it's called neomorphism it was a, it, it's a, it's a design trend that showed up somewhere in the mid of 2019 uh, the whole idea was uh, like you know the things that you otherwise touch your remote controls uh like you know uh things that are made of soft plastic you have a certain feel of holding them how do you translate that digitally is is what led to the design language it was controversial because a lot of people thought it was not practical to implement that because it poses a lot of uh, interesting tech and design challenges but we said what the hell <laughs> we'll do it and, and i think we ended up doing that we also open sourced the library yeah it's called synth right you guys can check it out in the in the description yeah so that was also a, a reflection of how uh, some of these physical metaphors can translate digital products it was fun doing that and may mm-hmm. not work for everyone but i think certainly did work for cred Did you ever try a feature uh, in within the product, right, where 
you had to abandon it because people just couldn't figure out how to use it oh yeah, yeah. i think from time to time honestly we haven't abandoned because people couldn't figure it out i think we course corrected i think a lot of features like you know uh, when you ship them sometimes people just do them more eloquently than how we designed it and sometimes we think it's designed very eloquently but people just don't get it so i we have we have had both these situations i saw the meme you posted on your twitter yep 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 i will pull that up here right now that has to stop man that that meme has to stop I can you can you explain why please because yeah. this is exactly what you're explaining right now in yeah no no so it's funny like you know that's that meme everybody would have seen that in some form or the other it's like you have a nicely paved uh, a cobbled pathway and suddenly there is like a, a a diagonal mud road where the person is there's no problem with that i have i have i have cut corners several times in my life there's nothing wrong in that but the problem is oh that is user experience while this is designed that's really stupid like you know the point is the job of the designer was to look that okay the guy is not taking the cobbled road but he's taking the mud path can you just get some nice tiles and pave that goddamn thing <laughs> like don't sit by saying everybody singing the mud road so that is the user experience is the stupidest thing as i can ever do like you, know, you understand what the user behavior is fix for that behavior and give the best experience it's like the 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 bombay metro behavior man bro it's like just because four people can sit on a chair does not mean that is the chair <laughs> Yeah, I, I, we we kind of naturalize that by saying like just because like you know uh, you can place somebody else's child on your lap because that uncle asked you to does not necessarily mean that's a natural behavior. It's very common. I, I grew up in Kerala. Like I'm sitting in my chair and suddenly a, 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 an uncle will show up with his young son and he'll simply plong the child on my lap. Now you, you can't naturalize that behavior. Like you know you should actually build. So that's the. Sh- so sudden just because people are actually doing something on your product is not good enough reason to leave it like that and mm-hmm. and, and the thing is a lot of people think ux and design are apparently two different things see ux is an outcome of design ux is the outcome of design what do you mean by that of course because user experiences something basis what you give him everything that you do is actually designed or not designed sometimes you leave something undesigned and the person takes it it's also an outcome of design mm. take an architectural example uh, tanmay uh, if you take the brutalist architecture of of euro plater they left the walls unfinished like you know they didn't polish and paint it it is also design like on the other hand the taj mahal is built with polished marble both of them have outcomes and both of them are perceived differently and both of them have innate purpose that they served for so basically design is what makes people understand what the experience should be when you design it badly the experience is bad when you design it really well the experience is good so there is design but there is no ux is like a really dumb thing to say r is the designed object and driving is the experience that he has like you know there's great design uh, but i took an auto rickshaw that is ux is stupid right like i mean i mean you took a rick only because the car didn't work the rick was designed to be cheaper <laughs> that's a whole days conversation as to if rick is all you need then all the automobile companies should shut and go home that's a utilitarian argument mm. uh, the thing that pisses me off than my more than any of this is like you know people who walk in and ask is say kya hoga yeah <laughs> So that's a question. Like if your if your parents thought like that, you wouldn't be there. <laughs> I like yeah. how all of the villainization of the conventional wisdom is in Hindi. <laughs> the true Tamilian uh, at heart. <laughs> well, fist bump from a fellow Bangalorean. If something is utilitarian, it remains utilitarian. Something not only has utility. but it's also beautiful right then it that utility turns into an emotional bond with that experience am i am i making sense like some yes yes you are man you i think you you're absolutely right uh tanmay it's funny i'll tell you like this is something which which kunal says from time to time i say it from time to time see i think people fall to beautiful things in this uh in this world like if something is beautiful your first reaction is like uh, again in hindi isme kuch to jhol hai why is it so good then you have to come out look and say that nahi ye cheat karega baad mein nahi ye baad mein paisa mangega like you are naturally trained to say that if something is too good to be true something is too beautiful too structured then it will it will come with some caveat steve jobs apparently said design is not how it looks but it is how it works like i think this the whole fraternity abuses that line to cover up their ineptitude steve jobs was the one who actually spent delayed a release of a product because the typography was not nice he is the one who actually says and talks about the aluminum that he uses here is a guy who really cared about how 
shit looked and he spoke about how things worked after making sure that shit looks really good yeah, i mean the macintosh the macintosh is a great example right like that computer just not only made so much more efficient for the user but also looked incredibly good it was cute looking non threatening computer that made you happy to use it yeah man i think he genuinely cared about this is what i'm trying to say a lot of people say as if oh steve jobs didn't care about how things looked he cared about how shit worked no he didn't if, if there was somebody who genuinely cared about how shit looks it was him and there's a very famous line by him man which i think people need to know so he actually said if you were a carpenter and a true one when you build a nice almira you'll actually put a nice piece of wood at the back you won't put a cheap piece of plywood over there because nobody's seeing it if you really care about your craft you will actually put a nice piece of wood even at the back even if it is sitting against the wall because you fucking know it is there mm. here is a guy who actually went into that degree of detail and then suddenly you have like few people showing up uh, under all threat about form versus function and say oh steve jobs said it's about how it works and it's not how It looks i think we all make choices based on how things look man i think it's uh, i'm 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 unpopular in the design fraternity for saying that I mean, it's funny you you you're both part insiders part outsiders in your field right <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that isn't that true? Like you're 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 of course you're part of the design community. You're you know you're well known. You're respected by um, a lot of them. I guess in every field there are a list of things that impresses your peers, not the market or the audience. Uh -huh. And you don't let that get to you. And you're an outsider to that extent. Is that is that accurate? Or yeah, I mean actually it's funny because I am actually fully an outsider in design spectrum because I'm an engineer. I actually have. no training in design and i actually am a, a javascript programmer that's all i know really <laughs> oh wow okay i have no real design craft i think my strength about being a designer is that i have great ability translating design into code i spent all my life working with great designers translating their work into something meaningful that works in code and i worked in adobe for almost 10 years and all my customers were designers can you see what an edge that is akshay in a room that's incredible right yeah. like it's a huge edge to know how can this design turn into code as everything right uh, there are there are two kinds of people in design fraternity if you may like you know uh, and one is a minority one is a majority i don't know why but i come i belong to the the small percentage of designers who actually think design is art as opposed to uh, as opposed to design is not art design is function designers actually at least in the digital product world believe design should not be art and the argument for that is that uh, art is pretty self fulfilling it never really keeps the other person's interest because art is selfish by nature yeah yeah and like you know at the risk of sounding not safe for work I mean, the most famous line is uh, art is like masturbation while design is like sex mm -hmm. design has two people and art has only one so um, so most of the people actually say that design has to innately solve a problem while art does not have to why can't it be both no it can i, I am like you know i mean i i i belong to the camp i am also a musician i belong that art does help solve problems it may not fall into your mold of like you know uh, of course if you think plumbing is solution to a problem or being an electrician fixing a tube light see if you start looking at life like that of course art does not solve for that but there was a dude who built the colosseum there was a dude that built taj mahal there was a dude that built qutub minar you don't call them uh, they, these were people who actually built meaningful structures which were also beautiful now would you say taj mahal is a meaningless structure i mean where will the argument take you or 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 are those great colonial buildings or are those uh, buildings in spain that were built in the the glorious period of architecture would you call them all meaningless just because they are not built with the conventional notion of function first so yeah harish okay i while i understand it right i can also understand why it would be difficult when you have to ship at scale to work with someone who believes like this you don't have time to make art on every decision right sometimes you got to you got to cap it somewhere and be like okay this is where my art stops and this is where i you know i got i got to start shipping so how do you deal with that given that you know it's there's such deep belief in this i think i think then my the intent matters more than your ability to do it like in the challenge is largely not having intent for example um, we were all 
probably spend time as bachelors sitting in hostel room. There are two kinds of people, right? Like, you know, I had no intent cleaning my room. You know what I mean? I had like a really messy room while I was in a college hostel. While there were people who had an intent to clean it. Some people like really put the effort in clean. But if you actually think the cleaning is not required, you're going to actually get shoddy, 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 or shoddy, and you'll be the shoddiest. The problem is the intent to create something artsy is more important. Of course, you're right. Every single time you might not be able to do it. But if you're a person who thinks it is not required, you will never create it you know i am only trying to say that when you have a chance make something nice i mean i mean you may not be able to make something nice all day every day right when you're shipping at scale when you're actually experimenting uh when you don't know what exactly the user wants i get it like you, know, you can't keep doing like you can't keep saying i'll keep polishing the surface when you don't even know if the customer wants it i'm not trying to say that but having that belief that if you can polish the surface you must polish the surface is all I'm trying to say. But because there's a whole bunch of people who actually say that perfection is a myth. No, perfection is a myth. But imagine if there is a room that you're in that's incredibly clean. All the furniture is beautiful, right? And you're going to bring in a new piece of furniture into that room. Before you bring it into that room and keep it and make it a permanent fixture, you're likely to clean it more than you would if the room was dirty. So the lower bar gets increased, right? Like at the, at the worst case becomes very good. Right, that's what perfection does. Yep, yep, yep. And and uh, 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 to the perfection argument, yeah, perfection is a very subjective thing. Right, you know, what's perfect for me is not perfect. Of course, of course. Or your bar for perfection is far lower. I, I am only arguing that the intent is important. Basically, uh, like when you say things should work, it should come from within you, man. Uh, you should not say things should work as an excuse to not making things work really well. You know what I mean? It's almost like you would see that in India very commonly. Like I, I work in the music industry, right? I have seen two kinds of sound vendors. The ones who will come with amplifier, which will not have a plug point. Mm. Instead, they use two matchsticks and, and connect it. That shit works. Like my entire concert will run. That is because the guy never intends to fix it. Like, you know, while there's somebody else who actually says, no, no, my gear, my wires will be nicely rigged. I will tie them together. I will mark them. I'll put them. And the second vendor also, the guitar may not work because he connected it wrongly. But he has the right intent. You know what I mean? Like the other guy, neither has the intent, nor is his product working. No, fair point. Intent is, intent is everything, actually. I want to understand the cred logo, right? You're building a product for top 1% of users, credit card holders. You want it to be really premium, really sexy. But it's this black maze security thing. Like, can you tell me what this is and what is the idea behind it? It's grown on me. I didn't like it the first time I saw it. It's grown on me now. The brief was very simple. There's a guy called Jibin uh, Joseph in my team who made it. I think he got it right the first time. I think the brief that uh, came from Kunal was that uh, of, and easy to recognize shape like everybody understands a shield it is actually a geometric shield like a shield is something that is broadly understood and uh, the the second thing that we said is it should feel like something which is access restricted so the maze that you see is actually a representation of a fingerprint biometric keep your finger and that's when you get access these were the only two things that we had it should look like an access restricted highly secure arena so and and that's how the the logo was and then there were some design considerations that it should be very lean it should sit and function on all things print all things digital like it should not be too intricate that we have to now have a separate uh creative plan to make it work so uh it was his first principles he created some three four of them and this resonated almost instantaneously it, it it's it's minimal and it's easy to to communicate it's not a very complex sort of logo and, and we wrote cred under that so the association was really really easy it was not supposed to work just as a unit like now people recognize it even without the x unit under because the company has done some amount of work in establishing the brand but you never thought of any color like cred feels you know the app now has color right like on the on the rewards page etc et the rest of it feels monochromatic in the sense like it's just the logo etc cetera, etc cetera. like did you, you didn't want any color in the logo no primarily because when we started if you have seen uh, tanmay i don't know if you have seen our earlier ads before the so uh, the idea was to go all black so it was sort of like you know black as a as a metaphor for something which is like club class premium 
uh, differentiated. If you see almost every guy when he wants to do something uh, uh, for the premium, it is either black, platinum. Or black, Akshay. Yeah. Of, of, so basically, monochrome helps you establish that really well because when you put color, you'll have to do color matching. Like Let's say I had like a yellow color thing then I have to find out bottle that go with. So black and white has this innate sense that it can, black will work on all light colors and white will work on all dark colors. And uh, whenever you have to push it, you can push it in monochrome. As a young company, Tanmay, we wanted to keep it in a way that it drove home the point without a lot of elaborate explaining. Like, you know, white and black is is just understood. Like, you know, it is, and, and we were the first one to actually throw a black ad on Times of India. Like, we actually painted the entire front full of it black and, and put, a, put a white logo on that. What you did not account for was uh, the printer running out of toner in the middle of Times of India printing because you think it's black. But it's turned out great. Uh, this was our first ever time that we did. We 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 got that sorted the second ad. I think there was also some contrast issues that we had to deal with the first time. But but we said, what the hell, we'll do it. What would the cred app look like without Harish? Like, what are the principles that are deeply personal to you? Uh, yeah, judging the book by its cover, judging a music album by its album art. I think that's what I am. I think uh, if it doesn't look good, I will not touch it. Design also acts as salesmanship, right? Like good design is great salesmanship also for this very reason. Yep, yep, yep. And I think it has worked for credo because the brand positioning has been that from the word go. Uh, so, so one thing that I deeply stand for is that if it is, even if it is like something that you throw away, it has to be presented well. So I, I follow that in everything that I do and it kind of reflects on my design. Like even if I'm doing like a Facebook live, I try to make sure that I do use good gear and I, I give a performance. I don't, I don't, I don't like sloppy in anything. I, I don't know if that would be the case if you had a different designer in there because they might have different considerations. The, the, the second thing Akshay that, um, that is very close to me uh, is a principle I learned in 2005 when I joined this company called Macromedia. Uh, it eventually got acquired by Adobe. That's how I ended up in Adobe. And this is the company that made Flash. So the, the CEO who took my um, orientation, we were like just 10 people in India. Uh, he said one line, it was a slide on his presentation where he said movement is meaning. Uh, that, that thing has stuck with me for this many years. It's been 16 years right now. So if you actually see, I am, I build cred like a movie trailer. I don't build it like an app. Like, you know, like the first ever guy that I hired after I hired an illustrator was a motion designer. And the first ever UI pitch, the entire experience pitch of cred was not a prototype. It was a video. Like, you know, we played a video to Kunal. This is how the Apple works. So I am, I'm very, uh, my storytelling is a bit like doing cinema. Like, you know, you don't watch a movie knowing this is what's going to happen. Like, so I like the intrigue of how movies or how gently, I, I mean, the Apple way is cinematic. If you actually see, there's a lot of things that people call are unrequired animations, but you don't, you don't get it, right? Like, honestly, no, no animation is unrequired, by the way, every, as a user. Yeah, when you do them meaningfully, right? Like when you do them, so it's not like, no offense, but it should not be like a Rohit Shetty movie. Or, or, or it should not be like a Sindhi wedding, you know, hard to explain as to why they do what they do. But then if you do them rightly and you orchestrate and choreograph it nice, uh, people like to go through the experience. And Penmay and Akshay, one funny thing is, everybody told me that the onboarding of cred would not work because it is too long. Oh, really? Yeah, because it has got about 13, 14 steps. You know what is funny? When we launched the product, nobody knew it was that many because it was more like a storytelling. Yes, it was. And every third step had one animation, which said, I'm doing blah, blue, blue. And then <laughs> so that is my style of designing. My style of designing is very uh, bit like crafting and stitching scenes together. And for me, the UI of credit is also scenes. Like, you know, it is like you enter a room and uh, eventually then I think about it, we call it a club, right? Imagine how you would use a club. Like you, know, you have a lobby, you have a billiards area, you have a bar, you have a play area, you have site. So basically you're navigating scenes. And second thing is like, you don't navigate familiar places, right? Do you navigate to your home every day when you're driving? You don't, you just go home. So navigation is for unknown, unknown spaces. Unfortunately, in digital products, people spend way too much time designing navigation. Navigation is needed only once. Once you have gone, you know how to go there. So, which is why my idea of designing credits to be a little more scene oriented, a little more like how you would walk a mall. You know where the food court in Phoenix Market City is. You even know which elevator. Yeah. <laughs> but the first day you actually go through the joy of discovering it. Uh, there are two kinds of people, Tanmay. Sorry, longish answer, but... Please go for it. I'm loving this. People that take an elevator in a mall 
and people that take an escalator in the mall. The people that take an elevator in the mall are not very valuable to the mall because they come very targeted and they probably are using the loo on the third floor and then they are going back to the parking. But the ones that take the escalator are the ones that walk the floor. The ones that walk the floor are the ones that will give you business. So my product is not built for you to go to one particular place in the easiest fashion. I don't even build for that. I actually have built this product so that you explore my product, which is why people keep asking, Are why don't you have a search bar on uh, the, the, the rewards of cred? It'll be so easy see if I, I don't want you to, I don't want you to search. I want you to come discover. I want you to swipe through them and see what is there. And you, who knows, you might discover something. It's the same Tinder argument, right? Like show all the girls in my area into a nice two by N grid. And I will pick like, you know, good UX would be like show as many girls in one fold so that I can pick the ones, apply a filter. And then it'll suddenly show and I can click It'll work like that. That product wouldn't have been like $2 billion in revenue if they did that. If I was in the product team and I'm trying to optimize the number of things that somebody does on the app. And that's mm. my KPI. And yeah. your KPI is like, I'm going to make art. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, sir, this is how are these different. Like, going to get how, are, yeah, how, how, how do you make that work? No, I think uh, uh, if you're doing meaningless shit, then uh, whether or not you're creating art, you're actually doing meaningless shit. So I think you should do meaningful art. And I think meaningful art always translates. For example, I can't wake up in the office and say, oh, today I just feel like throwing a nice video on the homepage of Fred just because I can. Like, that's stupid. Like if I did that, then then I shouldn't have the job. But when you when you actually think about what are the most elegant ways or what are the most creative ways you can solve for a problem uh, that the customer uh, innately would like a solution for, that creativity is what I call art, Akshay. So art for art will not work on digital products. Like even if I wanted to, having an artistic bent of mind will help you solve things elegantly. That's all I'm trying to mention. So uh, I don't want to fix for leaks. Mm. I actually want to good plumbing like like the the standard indian thing is to tie cloth around your leaky tap if you have grown up in a in a traditional south indian home anywhere in south india you will have leaky taps and my mom's primary solution was to tear an old sari and tie it around but if you actually go to the west they'll actually call a plumber and they will actually fix the tap there's something called fixing the tap in india we just put jugaad on everything you have to fix them nicely that's what i mean by art like you know if something is not working you have to fix them nicely like a product manager can't say abhi uske time nahi hai let us put one nice banner on top and say click below <laughs> Somebody is not clicking the button, fix it. Button. It's almost like my door is not working. I put a sticker on the door saying this is the door. It's like really stupid. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Like, so don't do that. Like, you know, if your door is not working, fix the freaking door. There's the, there's a difference between fixing and fixing them elegantly. All I'm saying is fix them elegantly. Now you've seen how passionate he is about this. Okay. So now imagine me, all right. I have to pitch making ads for a panel with you know Kunal there, then Harish is also there right and i remember discussing with you know trupti and kunal saying i'm i'm the most scared here i am is of impressing harish like if harish walks away impressed then we have something then we went with the first campaign which was uh, which was the voice over let's just do a simple voice over not everybody gets it campaign there were two options then we had considered rahul dravid then also right like people don't know this but we had a rahul dravid option the films i'll tell you what the film uh, earlier rahul dravid film was we had an idea, which is the, the line was, it pays to be good. All right. That's the core, you know, the cred philosophy. All right. Oh, if you're, if you're credit worthy, if you're, you know, financially, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> dependable, then it pays to be good. So you get rewarded on cred. So the film opens with Rahul Ravid is in the uh, lo- lobby of a five-star hotel. Okay. Rahul Ravid is reading a paper. There's a kid in front of him doing, tish cow, tish cow, tish cow, tish cow, tish cow, tish cow, tish cow. Rahul Ravid just looks down from the paper. And he looks up and the kid continues, uncle, uncle, ditch cow, ditch cow, ditch cow, ditch cow, to Raul Ravid, the nicest man you'll meet. And then Raul Ravid looks down. There's a giant expensive looking vase next to him. Ravid just pushes the vase off the table and it just crashes. Okay. Three seconds later, like hotel staff has come. They're looking at the kid. The mother comes in saying, kya 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 tumne? I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Mr. Dravid. And she's like hitting the kid and she's taking him away. And Ravid just goes back to the newspaper smiling and it says, it pays to be good. Right. There is no one suspects that Dravid is the one who's done this. Okay. And then we were doing all this and there were a bunch of like, people were like, I don't know if Dravid can act. I don't know if he'll be able to pull this off. You know, there was some COVID and this and that. So I called up Kunal and said, look, I know the team likes this one. My gut says this one will be fun at scale doing multiple actors, you know, over IPL doing three, four, five. 
it will become cool right and i think it's a it's a fresh format and then kunal just calls me and says he's like harish likes the dravid one and if he was like yeah, i was like and in my head i'm like harish is the villain right so i'm like harish south indian will like south india and these all south indians i'm south indian by the way <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, i'm also south indian i love raul dravid but no and all. then it finally happened and then harish picked me after saying dude campaign campaign went well good call i was like oh this is true success so i think i think this i was i was bummed that we couldn't do dravid in the first iteration but i was so glad the second one second one was even bigger right right it was awesome did you did you think it would be this big a deal the the dravid one i think uh, like look there's always some bit of uh, uh, skepticism uh, whether whether the, the projection would work with people or people would just like there's always somebody taking offense in this country so you never know which way the joke is flying in this country uh, so there was that bit of anxiety uh, but when i saw it and and when i saw him, when i saw him break the, the side view that's so good that's so like okay shit, so dude if not for anything else just just watching it. And, and and he laughs after doing that that's a funny bit in this like after breaking it like i said i was like to oh my you folk like this shit is going to work for whatever i know what to do to cred uh, but the we are right but when it broke and within within about like 10 12 minutes uh, it was very clear that it's resonating and it's just going to uh, I, i it broke the internet in more ways than i had imagined yeah same the venkatesh prasad one was also hilarious yeah that was good right i i enjoyed that one like it was mine and ayappa's you know the where artists are like oh this is what the fans like we like this other esoteric thing that nobody else cares about <laughs> i remember saba karim sitting in a uh, in a bath uh, was like how ridiculous can you get it was like i saw this design post on linkedin someone made a video this kid applying for internship and he made a video which i thought was interesting it was he put up a proof of yep. work i saw that uh his name and he turns out to be my flatmate's brother okay so my fl- yeah akash's brother so akash comes running up saying bro my brother made something it's going viral on linkedin so i saw it and then uh, I, i saw it and i and i copied the link and i was just going to send it to you then i went in so into the comments and turns out he was already hired by the time yeah. i even got to the link tell me about that like do is this uh, is this how you get hired at cred just make something show proof of work no man i think there was more nuance to what he did a lot of people uh, show proof of work i think if you see the the current crop of good designers all of them have like really solid proof of work like i mean there are very few pretenders really like if you actually look at the good guys they have they have great body of work uh, with with avkash i have to specifically uh, two things right one is he really wanted to work at cred he didn't put a generic piece of work over there to say that he was really good all that he put out in the video was in some way cred specific mm-hmm. like you know more than the craft and his ability here is a guy who really believes that cred is a company that he wanted to work in a company that he would hang out with people and learn from and that degree of wanting to work in a company that he touching like you know with, with with that kid's ability i'm sure he would have gotten hired i'm sure he would have gotten hired i don't think it would have been a challenge for him but here is somebody who really wanted to to work at cred and secondly confidence is addictive when when you see confident people like there's a slight there's a thin line between confident and cocky right like confident people are are delightful and and his entire video his post whole package that he did on linkedin just showed how confident the guy was like a in his abilities and b in terms of what he really thinks he can do at cred and those are those are enough reasons to hire a person in the system because a here is a guy who believes in our journey even before we started working with us like you know he did a whole bunch of work and said that i really want to work at cred uh, the first thing that i look for is like do you really want to work here and why do you want to work here he answered those questions without saying a word his video actually had answers to those two questions and his craft was there to be seen if you see the so the number of comments that came to it and the number of people who actually offered him a job after i said you are hired ridiculous number of people actually offered him a job by saying if cred is not hiring you uh, i hire you people actually said cred only gave you an internship i'll give you a full time job uh, so his craft was there to be seen and uh, i i love people like that and and kunal likes people like all of us like people like i'm sure you will like somebody like that i love that so yeah So in fact our editor Jaydeep uh, who edits for us he's an engineer who also happens to you know uh, he knows how to code and edit he may he may coded a bot that goes and likes all of my videos then he made a video about how he made this bot and that's how wow. i discovered that's how i discovered it and now he's you know he, you, you're watching a video that he's probably going to edit right and on that note i want to ask you harish is there what is it like managing a team of you know artists 
like managing an artist are just oxymoronic word right <laughs> so what what is that like so as a tanmay being very honest i don't think the people that work in the creative design team can be managed like you know they are not i'm not like a flow supervisor i'm not really like working an assembly line i think uh, one thing that i have learned like the most functional efficient creative teams manage upwards manage upwards what does that mean i would like my team to manage me just the way i manage kunal like you know my job is to make kunal successful like you know i came into this company because he has a vision he mm-hmm. believes this this is a product that will genuinely bring value to the customers to the employees to the shareholders and and he has this passion to solve this problem that feels very passionately about right so my job is to make sure that i do what it takes to make him successful i see the same thing back to my team like you know you make everybody that you owe something successful naturally so basically they don't work for me they just want to make cred successful and it is all one step at a time so if, if i am able to deliver something that i committed to so let's say i tell him i build the most beautifully designed payment experience that's something that i am promising him and that's why my team promises they are in it because they believe in it as much as i do so now i can't tell them yaar e mere ko chahiye ab karke bata or i can't tell like do it right now i'm going to review it in the evening we don't have i i don't review stuff with people because i don't hire people whom i have to review mm. like if i don't if i don't trust their innate ability uh to do what i believe is right for the company then they probably will not succeed anyway in the team i have a very liberal culture for my team where their successes are theirs while their failures are mine and this is something which i was taught in my previous companies like i spent 10 years in adobe my boss has taught this to me and and it's a company that upholds this value really well i'm very very happy that i got a chance to work at mm-hmm. adobe where my boss has always gave credit to me mm-hmm. when things were right and always shielded me when i was wrong i like not once have i gotten pulled up in my life for the mistakes that i made and that resulted in me giving 10 years of my loyalty to that company i wouldn't have left unless i was asked to move to europe my 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 child was born and i just didn't have a choice to move to europe so i just decided i have to let go and start working elsewhere so that's it but i don't i don't manage them and these guys actually manage me pretty well arish i've never seen anybody be this passionate about design you know and i have a cup i have i have a few designer friends and it was super fascinating uh, no no and they all are in their own respective ways it's just that i express it differently from and and stuff like you express it very expressively <laughs> i must say i'm probably more explicit than many <laughs> people so that's all yeah and i love that i love that harish i was telling akshay when you know we were having internet issues saying i love how opinionated opinionated you are and it takes a certain sense of security and vulnerability to be vocal it's very much like design design it involves it to be different and to be bold it requires a certain sense of security and vulnerability right like art means security and vulnerability it's 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 scientifical you're putting yourself out in the world as this is what i am and you're you're going to invite uh, people you know you're going to invite brick patch but at the same time it requires some guts to be able to put yourself out there yep Uh, stay this way arish always yeah man i think there's only one one principle that i'm trying to base myself on uh, a fresh mistake every day and uh, no same mistake twice that's all i'm trying to do that's a good one guys uh, harish uh, harish is there a designation i know cred doesn't do designations but what no, do they call you just say uh, design just... papa design papa at cred <laughs> harish design at cred new mistake every day fresh mistakes every day Thank you for joining us Arish this was a pleasure good and luck. yeah and good luck on this one it was fun thank you so much for speaking to me thank you thank you thank you and uh, okay. chat with you after the next campaign yes chief <laughs> looking forward <laughs>